Hey, beautiful people, we need to get this camera set up. And we're going to start that by downloading a copy of Etcher, but not from their web zone, nay, because if you do that, you'll end up with a 32-bit version because their web zone is broken. Yeah. So we need to head over to their GitHub page and um, pop over to the release section currently. It's 1.5.109. We're going to skip the zips. We're going to skip the RPMs. We're going to skip the dubs. We're going to make this as easy as possible. We're going to grab the app image, and I'm going to put that into my downloads folder. Then, then we need the big cheat. Show me the webcam. That's right, from Show Me the Webcam. Um, this is a great little project that has been stuck together using various guides, actually the good parts of various guides, uh, found around the internet. I recommend it. It works. It gets the job done. This is how we're going to cheat currently. V130 is the latest release with a bunch of handy new um, bits that you can use to modify some of the camera settings on the card after you've installed. So we will need the SD card V130 image. Okay, this is going to be your download folder and I've extracted. We have the image from the SD card V130 and we have Etcher. Now you can do a chmod plus x, um, but with um, depending on window manager, desktop manager you're running, it can be as simple as right click and saying you can run as a program, which I have faith that it will. Now on my computer it does a fun thing. I'm like, where did it go? Why is it not popping up? Because it likes to pop up on monitor number one, which is on my far left. Look at it. There it is. Say hello, Etcher. It won't say hello back. Hello. Englishing. Not doing it well this morning. But we need to pick our image, which is going to be SD card V130. It might be a higher number depending on how many years in the future you're watching this. And we'll click OK. We need to select that target. It should see our uh, generic mass storage. You know, it's going to be easy to find. Whatever. We'll have uh, four hidden. So you see something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's clever. It's like, don't don't write it to your internal drive, which we won't. So let's select that and um, flash. And you must say, aha, after the end of that. And it's done. That's it. We do not need to flash. Well, you might need to flash another. I highly doubt you will. What do we have on the table first? We need to start with, um, yeah, this is like the cheapest thing I could find. It was the official Raspberry Pi Zero case. You will need the Raspberry Pi Zero camera cable because the one the case comes with is a wee short. But this is a couple of bucks. It's just got the um, tapered adapter on the end. And of course, the Pi Zero or Pi Zero W in this case. It's nice, small, and has places to stick ribbon cables. Mm hmm. And this is probably what you're here for. This is the high quality Pi Cam 12 megapixels of squarey, hopefully slightly better than a webcam goodness, but it has interchangeable lenses. Speaking of that, this is the uh, six millimeter lens. I also have the telephoto lens, but it. It's a bit of a tight shot, even in this room, you know, I, I originally plugged that lens and I'm like, hey, I can see my pores. Here it is. This is, um, th these guys and gals have been making lenses for quite some time for Raspberry Pi, but that's where I get my six mil from. And this is the $50 Big Chungus from um, Adafruit, 10 megapixel. 16 millimeter and um it <laughs> i really don't know maybe outdoor photography you cannot use this indoors very effectively so do keep that in mind skip this one if you plan on making a webcam and by that i mean even one on the opposite side of the room but to write uh, i picked up this little uni usb3 SD and micro SD card writer. Nothing to it. It's made out of aluminium. I was happy to see that. It's going to be a bit more durable, but you know how these work. You just pop that in and doop, doop, and it's done. 
But since we already have our image written, we don't need to do anything. We just need to pop that in. It doesn't click. It doesn't lock. It just slides into place, man. But how do we want to do this? Um, let's get the cable in and then we will put the pie in the coconut. Sounds like a plan. Okay. How do we start with this? Uh, ribbon cable adapters. You might have ran into these on mobile devices or, you know, anything with a lot of surface mount stuff on it. They pop out. Just give them a tug on both sides. They'll fight you sometimes. Sometimes one side will pull out, one side won't. But what side do you put the ribbon cable in? I saw a lot of people asking about this online. Pins down, like laces out. You can't really tell. You know, I was kind of thinking, oh, I could flip it over and show you. Hey, look, nope. Mm -mm. You just got to trust me on this one. Pins down. That's always a safe bet. But worst case scenario, if you plug it in correctly, it's just not going to work. And you'll have to flip the ribbon cable over. Now, it's not going to push in very far. Like, um... It's a very shallow connector, like more shallow than I was expecting. Like, really? That's as far as it's going to go. That's as far as it's going to go. But once I have that together, I'm just going to thread it through. Now, I did get the camera. It, well, I guess it comes with a camera case. You know, it's, it has the ribbon connector for the original Raspi Gen 1, Gen 2 cameras, and um, which, which we do not have. So let's thread that through. This is something that caught me off guard card just a little bit because I was originally pushing it into place and like why won't you snap it's got a little retainer clip right there so old man Vin pro tip pull out just a little bit until we get it to snap into place and it goes in piece of cake just gonna see yeah just like that really nothing to it and we're effectively done with the pie all we're going to do now is we're going to put the lid on it. And um, one, two, third time's the charm. Yeah. Dramatic effects. Do you believe I did it for that? I don't. Camera module time. A couple things you might need to know. Um, I don't remember if the C-mount came with the telephoto lens or if it came with the kit itself. But this is an adapter that you have to use for certain lenses. Um, the one I know you have to use it for is the 16 millimeter telephoto lens because I spent a solid 45 minutes trying to get this guy to focus. And I ran across a blog that said, man, I spent 45 minutes trying to get this guy to focus until I realized, hey, I needed to put this adapter on. To which I retort, there's an adapter, and sure enough, I went back through the uh, kit I ordered, and I felt that little bugger in there. But we don't need it for the 6mm lens. We're just going to uh, pull that off. There we go. Make sure there's no blood, fingerprints, things you would typically find inside of a camera lens. And we're going to screw it on. There's nothing to this, you know. Don't put it in. What are you focusing on, camera? Come on. There we go. Um, yep, yeah, just finger tight. You don't want to torque that down. Um, pop the lens. Look, no fingerprints. Somehow fingerprints will appear on the lens before you get ready to use it, though. There goes to fingerprints. I don't make the rules. That, unfortunately, is just how it goes. But we have to put the other end of a ribbon connector somewhere. And you guessed it. It's going to go there. Same principle. Pins down. Let's flip that over. And this one... This, this one has a bit more of recess. I mean, you got to push it in there. Like, yeah, you, it feels like it's genuinely in. We just snap it in place. Can I do it? Yes, there we go. There. That's it. We're done. I could plug this in right now, and it would work. But we need to make it look pretty. Honestly, the first time I mounted this, I 
just put it on a tripod, and the Pi Zero with the case weighs so little, it was just kind of dangling. It worked. I wouldn't suggest that. Let's see if we can engineer a proper solution. And by proper solution, of course I mean painter's tape, gaffer's tape, whatever tape. Don't use duct tape. That's far too permanent. And this is a part of the video where I absolutely, positively have triggered at least one person to pause the video and head to the comments and tell me that there's a billion better ways to do this. And you would be correct. However, this is the Vin way, which is very similar to the wrong way. It's only faster. Proof of concept, prototyping, whatever lie you need to tell yourself. Gaffer's tape or painter's tape will get the job done. With my engineering excellence, I accidentally covered up the USB hole that we need because the last USB hole on the Raspberry Pi Zero is for power only. We need access to the middle plug because it is uh, power and data, but we should be good to go. And this is our Raspberry Pi high quality camera plugged directly into OBS. I just have it set up as um, V4 L2 and yeah, it shows up as USB, what is it, USB-C device or UVC? I should say, and um, there's not much to it. I mean, you can set what uh, video input emulation mode that you want. All the defaults are really what you probably want to stick with. I think maybe you might want to play around with um, the color range, but the only like effective control that you have is brightness, which you can increase and decrease depending in your current lighting situation. Let's say if you were to use Jitsi or Zoom, Flying Spaghetti Monster for Bit Sky, it's going to work just like a regular webcam. Ha, there I am. Just popped in. I do a little dance. I don't sing a little song, but I do wave. Pretty good at waving. It's one of my lesser known skills. But we can take a look. Yeah. It's just a UVC camera. There it is. But this is the part where you've been waiting. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you didn't even know this part was in here. But, aha, my second greatest skill, walking slowly. This is a comparison between my Vixia, a Logitech C510, a, oh, geez, the Raspberry Pi HQ camera that we've constructed in this video, and my Nikon D3400 SLR. Now, I should probably tell you which one's which. The Vixia camcorder is in the upper left-hand corner. That's going through just a USB 3 HDMI encoder doing 1080p60. Upper right, that's the Pi Cam HQ. Coming over USB, doing 1080p30 on default settings. Bottom left is the Logitech webcam that I dug out of a drawer. I mean, it technically functions. So, And of course, on the bottom right hand corner is the camera I use. It's a 24 megapixel um, Nikon plugged into a Blackmagic Intensity Pro encoder doing 1080p30 as well. But yeah, there it is. That's the Raspberry Pi HQ Cam. I hope it was informative. Maybe we'll be learning something. Or maybe I just gave you an excuse to go spend some money. Or maybe I saved you some money. Who knows? And that's it. Roll the credits. Our beautiful party patrons who make all of this possible over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, giving us a wet sinky cash to finance some of our distortion, a little bit of our insanity, and mostly our fun. And as always, there will be a link in the description to everything used in the video. Okay, now get out there, make something awesome.